Hey guys, welcome. Today, I'm gonna show you how you can warp your player back to the ground after touching a damage zone. This is perfect for platformers where you have a cliff or poison or lava or something that damages the player when they touch it, and then you immediately want to warp them back to safe ground. All games have different needs, so I'll show you a couple of ways we can set this up. Let's get started. Okay, and here's what we're starting off with. I have a player that can move and jump. You can see his health over here is at five. I just put it in there to make it easy. And you can see that if he falls too far, we take some damage. There's obviously another problem where he just keeps on falling forever, so we're gonna fix that. Damage is simply being applied when our player collides with this edge collider here. You can see it over here, I have it set to trigger, and we have a little fall damage script, which really just looks for the player tag, grabs the player health component, and damages the player. Very, very simple stuff. So we are going to create a system that will allow us to warp our player back to a safe location, back up on these platforms, once he falls and hits this line. There are many, many ways that we could accomplish this, so I'm going to show you in two different ways. The first way is simply just to check if our player is safe on the ground somewhere and every couple of seconds just save that location. So that one is completely automatic. As long as our player is touching the ground and he is safely on the ground, then it will store that location. And then we will warp him to that location when we damage our player from fall damage when he touches this edge collider here. That's like a nice plug and play type of solution where you make it once and it'll just work forever, but that might not not be how you want your game to work. So I will show you a second way in which we can actually set up multiple checkpoints throughout the level. And if we pass that checkpoint, then if we fall and damage the player, then we will warp back to that checkpoint location. So let's get started. And we will start with the automatic system that runs every couple of seconds. So in my scripts folder, I'm gonna go into my player and create a new folder called warp to safe ground. Let's go in there and let's create a new script called safe ground saver. Let's add that to our player character and let's open it up. Let's get rid of all the startup stuff. So we know that we're going to want to save our player's safe ground location every couple of seconds. So let's create a float that will allow us to determine how often. So we'll set up a private float called save frequency and we'll default that to three seconds. Next, let's set up a public vector three, which is going to be our actual safe ground transform position location. And actually a vector two will work just fine since this is a 2D platformer. Let's call it safe ground location. And we're gonna set this as a public getter and a private setter. That means we can get this vector two from any other script, but we're only able to change this vector two within this script. That's what it means by private set. And we're gonna default that to a vector 2.0, which, and by the way, this is exactly the same as writing Either way works totally fine. So every couple of seconds, we are going to be updating this location. And I wanna do that by setting up a coroutine. So let's create a variable for that. Private coroutine, let's call it safe ground coroutine. And now let's actually set up the coroutine method. So we'll say private I enumerator, save ground location. So what do we wanna do? Well, first we wanna just get some sort of timer going. Then we wanna see if the player is actually touching the ground. And if he is, then we want to update this safe ground location. And then we basically just wanna run this coroutine again to keep it on a constant loop. So that's the basics of how this is going to work. So the timer is going to be very simple. Let's set up a float called elapsed time. We'll default that to zero. Let's create a while loop. While the elapsed time is less than the save frequency, well then we'll actually update our timer. Elapsed time plus equals time dot delta time, yield return null. So the way a coroutine works, none of this will actually run until we exit this while loop. So this is gonna keep running and running and running until the elapsed time is not less than save frequency. So until more than three seconds is up and then it'll exit this loop and it'll run all this other stuff down here. So we're gonna set up a way to determine whether the player is touching the ground or not in another script in just a moment. But first let's do the rest of this coroutine. So we'll skip this one and go down here and say safe ground location is equal to the transformed opposition. Because again, we put this script on top of the player. So if we are touching the ground, then we are simply going to update our safe ground location to where the player is currently standing. Now to restart the coroutine, we're gonna grab this reference up here and say that is equal to start coroutine, save ground location. And we actually need to call this somewhere in order for it to actually run. And we're just gonna do that in the start function. So we can actually copy and paste this here because it's exactly the same. 
Now currently, when we start the game, it's going to run this coroutine and it's going to wait three seconds before it actually updates the save ground location for the first time. And that's not really the best because if we happen to fall off of the ledge before our three seconds are up, then it's going to warp us to a zero, zero location. And depending on how your scene is set up, that could be like super far away. So let's initialize a starting safe position before this has even run for the first time. So let's say our safe ground location is equal to our current transform dot position. So as long as you have your player starting the scene somewhere safe, then that is going to work out just fine. So let's actually create a method for determining whether the player is touching the ground or not. And we are going to set up another script for this because checking for this is outside the scope of this safe ground saver script. This is a totally separate job. So we will create a totally separate script to handle that. So in scripts, in player, in warp to safe ground, let's create a new script. Let's call it ground check. And let's drag that onto our player object as well. By the way, if you do not have a ground layer up here, go ahead and create add layer and create a ground layer. You're gonna need that in just a moment. So let's open up this ground check script. Let's get rid of all the startup stuff. So we're gonna be checking if the player is touching the ground using a physics box cast. And that is exactly the same as a ray cast, except it creates ray casts in the shape of a box. So we're gonna to need to set up a ray cast hit 2D variable. Let's call that ground hit. And now let's create a method. We're going to call it public bool is grounded. So we're going to say our ground hit is equal to physics 2D dot boxcast. Now, before we go any further, we're going to need to set up a couple of variables. In order to get our origin and size, I'm going to need a reference to our collider. I'm going to want to float to cover our distance here. And I'm going to want a layer mask to fill out this layer mask here. So let's get our collider first. Generic collider 2D is fine. Let's call it call and get a reference to that in our start function. Okay, so with that, we can say that our origin is our call.bounds.center. And now we can say that our size is our call.bounds.size. We don't want an angle, so we can throw in a zero. What direction do we want? Well, this is a box cast and we want it to be at the player's feet pointing down. So we're gonna say vector2.down. And let's create a serialized float to fill this in. So we'll say serialized field, private, float, extra height. Let's default that to something really small like 0.25. Let's put that in here. And finally, for our layer mask, let's create a serialized field called private layer mask called what is ground. And you can throw that in here. So we set this method up as a bool, not a void. So we need some return types. So let's say if ground hit dot collider does not equal null, then we will return true. Else, you guessed it, return false. Okay, so let's go back into our inspector and set what is ground on our ground check to ground. Now let's go back into our safe ground saver script. Let's grab a reference to our ground check script. So we'll say private ground check called ground check. Let's get a reference to that in our start function. And now down here, we can finally say if ground check dot is grounded, then we will update our safe ground location to our transform dot position. And now let's actually create a method to warp our player to the safe ground location. I'm gonna set this up by calling it right here in fall damage. And normally I would not set up that function in safe ground saver. I don't really feel like it's the job of this script to actually warp the player, but for the sake of keeping this tutorial very simple, we'll just create a public method down here called warp player to safe ground. And what is that gonna be? That's gonna be our transform dot position is equal to our safe ground location. And finally, to test that, let's go back to fall damage. Let's grab a reference to our safe ground saver. We'll say private safe ground saver called safe ground saver. So let's create a start function to actually grab this. So we can say safe ground saver is equal to game object dot find game object with tag. We'll say player dot get component safe ground saver. And then down here we can say safe ground saver dot war player to safe ground. Okay, so I've been standing here for more than three seconds. Let's fall off and make sure that we warp back there. Awesome. Go over here and stand here for a moment and fall off. There we go. So that is method one complete. This is completely automatic. And now let's see how we could do this with a checkpoint system instead. I'm actually going to remove our ground check component as well as our safe ground saver component from our player. And instead, I'm going to create a new script called safe ground checkpoint saver. And let's add that to our player. Let's go ahead and open that up and get rid of all the startup stuff. 
So we are going to do this by creating trigger checkpoints throughout the level. So let's create an on trigger enter 2D function. Now, just like with the ground check, I would like to set up a serialized field type layer mask called what is checkpoint. And then I want to check if what we collided with is within that layer mask. Now, in order to check if a collision is within a layer mask, we're going to need what's called a bitwise operator. So I'm going to paste that in here. Now, I am not comfortable really explaining this line to you because I do not know bitwise operators all that well. What I do know is that this works. But if you are out there and you understand bitwise operators a lot better than I do, then please let us know in the comments down below so that we can all learn something from this tutorial. But again, what this is checking is this collisions game objects physics layer matches this layer mask. What is checkpoint here? So if it matches, what are we going to do? We're going to update the safe ground location. So just like before, let's create a safe ground location vector 2. And so to update that, we are going to say safe ground location is equal to a new vector 2. For the x, we are going to say collision.bounds.center.x. And I'm doing that because I'm going to set up trigger box colliders in the scene. So we want to grab the center of the x so that no matter how wide the box is, we will warp to the center of that trigger box. And now for the y, we want to say collision.bounds.min.y min just meaning the minimum the very lowest point on the y for that trigger box collider and just like before i'll set up a warp player to safe ground within this script as well and we'll do that by saying our transform.position is equal to our safe ground location and just like before, if we start our game and we do not run into a trigger, then it's just going to warp us to vector 2.0, wherever that happens to be in our scene. So let's also initialize a starting safe location here as well. Let's do that in our start function. We're going to say safe ground location is equal to our transform dot position. Okay, and let's go back to our fall damage script. We no longer need that or that or that. Instead, let's get a reference to our safe ground checkpoint saver. Okay, and we'll do that by saying that is equal to game object dot find game object with tag player dot get component safe ground checkpoint saver. And then finally we can use that to actually call the warp function. Safe ground checkpoint saver dot warp player to safe ground. Okay, so we've got a what is checkpoint layer mask here. So let's go up to our layers and add a new layer and let's call it checkpoint. And then we will change what is checkpoint to checkpoint. Now let's create a couple of actual triggers. I'm just going to create an empty, call it checkpoint one. I'm going to reset the transform and move it over here. Let's add a box collider 2D to that. I'm going to drag that way up. There we go. And now we can duplicate that and I'll put the other one over here. So now we've got these two checkpoints. So over here back in our script, remember we set up the safe ground location to be the bounds center of the X, which will be right here in the middle. So we should land right here on this middle brick and the minimum on the Y axis, which I set that to be right on top of my floor layer there. And if we test this, it would probably help if I set them to be triggers. And while we're at it, let's also remember to change the layer on those two to checkpoint. Let's test that. Okay, so we just walked through our first checkpoint, but if we fall, you are going to see a problem. So what the heck just happened? Let's slow that down and watch it again. Okay, very slow, but we just walked through the checkpoint and let's see what happens when he falls all the way down. He's starting halfway through the floor there. Now this may or may not be a problem for you depending on your scene setup and depending on your sprite import settings. So we are simply warping the player to safe ground by just updating his transform.position. The transform.position of an object in Unity is dependent on that object's pivot point. And you can tell where it is based on where these arrows are. You can see on my character, it is in the center. And here's the actual file I used to import my character. You can see that his pivot is set to center. So it is trying to warp our player's middle position right here to be the center of the X, which was on this middle brick, but also the min on the Y, which is really right down here. And that's no good. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's go back to our safe ground checkpoint saver. Let's grab a reference to our player's collider. 
and a generic collider 2D is again just fine. Let's call it call. Let's grab a reference to that in our start function. And now I also want to set up a private float called safe spot y offset. So what I'm really trying to accomplish is to warp the player's feet, his very bottom position, to the floor right here, which is the trigger minimum bounds, not his center here. So what we're going to do is calculate that difference there. And we can do that by saying safe spot y offset is equal to our collider dot bounds dot size dot y divided by two. Y divided by two because we just want to take half of the character's height, which is his center to the bottom there. And we want to take that and we want to add it to our collision.bounds.min.y down here. Let's try that now. There we go. We went through the first checkpoint and warped back there. There's a second checkpoint right here. And if I fall down back over here, it's going to warp me over there. And it's warping me perfectly on the floor. Honestly, guys, thank you so very much for choosing this video to learn how to warp your player back to the ground safely. It really means the world to me. If you found this tutorial helpful, please let me know by giving me a like. And if you have any ideas for future tutorials that you would like me to cover, then please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you, guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day.